Good morning, folks. We've got lots to cover today and a special announcement at the end, so please stick around. We'll start at Soho Lasco C3, where we've got a more important story than missing CME images. A sundiving comet is heading in from the north, and this is definitely not a Kreutz. It will have its perihelion today. Updates coming in the evening news. Looking at the largest solar eruption of the last day, we see a CME release from just behind the southwestern limb. While we step back and watch it in 193 angstroms, I'll mention that if you didn't catch last night's video, you got a bit of catching up to do. NOAA has revamped their Space Weather Prediction Center and changed all the website addresses, so links need to be updated. Since my update last night, they've even added more to the homepage, like the HMI Continuum view of the sunspots, which took a little jump up in number this morning. They've got the solar wind on the home page as well. Looking at our last 24 hours, the density bulge with waning speed lasted for a good 12 hours. Geomagnetic instability remains, but it's lessened since the storms at the onset of the stream. Enlil sits next to the solar wind. They've got all the flux data, and below this you've got links to everything we usually monitor, so make sure you take them down so you don't go searching for them later. I don't know if you call a couple C flares an uptick, but it's waning back down now. Low solar activity continues despite those new spots. Furthest departing are fading away, so we come left. The southern baby group is still growing quickly, but also maintains magnetic separation for the most part. Same thing can be said about the incoming sunspots up north. And here's what we eyed cresting yesterday. I spy another one peeking over this morning. As the solar wind from the negative coronal hole wanes, the positive interplanetary magnetic fields have already swept towards Earth. The northern positive coronal hole is here and will look for a brief uptick in seismicity to end a very quiet last two and a half days. Plasma filament still snaking around in there too. There were no other big eruptions on the sun, but it looks like more filaments are turning in, plus those new spots will be monitoring today. Got a fascinating share from Cassini, updating the very old maps of Saturn's moons. Most of the ones updated here are also the star water moons, with a higher percentage of water content than Earth. We've also seen the terrible Turrialba volcano in Costa Rica begin erupting in the last 24 hours. And we've got more updates from the November climate report. 70 degree temperature drop in one day, largest snow cover in November's history record smashed but let's also not forget the heat extremes in the west all the way up to alaska look how many states though had a top five coldest november on record in the east got that typhoon in the south china sea heading for vietnam now looking at the predictions for storm formation if we get any should be in the red areas here Looking at the temperature delta from IntelliCast shows a very weird mix of temperature changes. This is because we've got powerful pressure nodes that drive warm air from the Gulf of Mexico and Mexico all the way up into northern Canada while another system drives cold air down past Florida and into the Caribbean. Ready for this? Tomorrow's frost and freeze warnings occupy a large part of northern Florida and every Gulf state except Texas. Most of Europe has something to watch for today as the huge North Atlantic low has a major convergence on land. We've also got a secondary low to the east as well, again. So everyone but Portugal, Spain, and Italy, just make sure you know what's coming this evening. Down under, we can see the lows atop New Zealand and southern Australia, but it is much clearer with the precipitable water overlay. Watch this loop or circle there in eastern Australia and the flow to New Zealand. Now look at the purple watch zones. Folks, please stay tuned now for an important bit of news about our community. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. The 2015 Conscious Life Expo is coming in February. The lineup is set. The reservations are starting already. The largest annual conference for awake individuals runs February 6th to 8th with a post conference schedule on the 9th as well. We've got names like David Wilcock, Greg Braden, and Nassim Haramin, George Norrie and Richard Dolan, Jim Mars, and dozens more. The prices are very reasonable. Normally big conventions command hundreds or thousands of dollars to enter and about the same for each workshop. Here the cost is low enough for many people to come expand their understanding of a great many issues. Among those dozens of presenters is me. I would love to see you out there for this event. I've got one free lecture on solar trigger disasters on Friday. 
Sunday night, we'll be discussing star water and the implications for life outside this planet. Our Earth is not so unique, and that is great for a number of reasons. Then, the big show is a post-conference feature workshop on the near-term future of Earth. We'll be diving deep into everything affecting our changing natural world, both natural and unnatural. I am told I may be on a panel or two as well. Updates will come. But until then, truly consider coming to the expo. You can already get your tickets. 12,000 awake individuals came last year in the world of the awake, the suspicious, those out of the matrix, comes into focus on Los Angeles in early February. Be safe, everyone.